In this video, we will explore the factors that lead to population growth. These are often called demographic factors. Demography is a study of the characteristics of human populations, such as growth, age structures, population density, and similar factors. One of the most important things to remember about human population growth is that this is not just a statistic. This is one of the most intensely personal decisions that humans make. To have a child or not have a child can depend on economics, gender dynamics, societal pressures, religion, and the simple but crushing reality that in some locations, infant and child mortality rates remain far too high. The rate of population growth in a country and the related factors can tell us a lot about the challenges that that country faces. So part of the goal in this video is to start thinking about these broader interactions between society and the environment. In the most basic formulation, population growth is simply the inputs minus the outputs over a fixed period of time. Inputs for population growth are births and immigration, and the outputs are death and immigration. As it turns out, migration, whether immigration or emigration, is an important part of population growth at the national level. There are some countries, the United States included, that have been heavily shaped through immigration. Other countries have virtually none. These are shown in white on the figure. And some countries actually lose population through emigration to other locations. These countries are shown in orange. When you look at the world and examine patterns in birth rates, the story becomes pretty simple. The highest birth rates shown here on the map are mostly in Sub-Saharan Africa and in some scattered countries on the Asian continent. The values shown here are the total fertility rate, a statistic we'll talk more about later. There are a number of reasons for the high birth rates in these countries that we'll start to explore in this video and which will become more evident as we move through subsequent videos. For now, we're going to talk more about the underlying factors that influence population growth. So let me ask you this question. Why is it that I have so far only mentioned births and immigration and not deaths or emigration? There's actually a good reason that we focus on the input side of the population growth equation rather than on the output side. Can you think of why? If you like, pause the video and consider the possible explanations for a minute or two. See if you come up with any ideas. Let's go on to the next page and we can explore this some more. If you consider a human lifetime, it would look something like this line. The green box in the middle is a reproductive period when it's possible for women to have children, say between 15 and 50 years, give or take a few years. Why are we just talking about women? Well, that's a topic for the next video, but for now, I'll just say that for population growth, women are far more important than men. More on that later. The key factor to understand about this very simple graph is that once someone in the population is on the right side of the reproductive period, once they're older, they have very little effect on future population growth rates. Let's say they were going to have one or two children. Well, that would have already occurred by the time they reach 60 or 70 years old. And those decisions matter far more for the future population growth than other factors like average lifetime, whether or not you live to 60, 70, or 80. If you look at the other side of the line on the left and imagine the decisions that are made during this part of life, you can imagine how this might affect future population growth. If I choose to have one child or five children, those kids will go on and potentially have their own children who will then have their own children. And these decisions about family size will ripple out for decades to come. So for overall rates of population growth, the number of children born to an average woman in her lifetime matters more than perhaps any other statistic. This is called the total fertility rate, and it provides one of the most clear indications of whether or not a country will have a low or a high population growth rate. Not quite convinced about death and life expectancy? We'll have a look at this graphic from gapminder.org. Each dot is a country, and over time we are looking at how population growth and life expectancy change. The take-home message from this graphic is that for most countries, population growth rates have declined even as life expectancy has increased. Now I said that deaths don't matter that much, but that's not quite true. Whether people tend to die at 60 or 70 will have a relatively small effect on future population growth rates. However, when children die young, it can have a profound effect on both population growth rates 
and decisions about family size. Imagine having a child in a place where there was a high likelihood that they would not survive past age five. In that circumstance, would you consider having more children? What if children were important to your family's economic survival? Would you then have more children? There are very strong correlations between under five mortality and overall rates of population growth, but perhaps not in the way that you might expect. If we look at the map on the left, we see average rates of population growth, and the map on the right shows under five mortality. As you can see, there are strong similarities between these two maps. In places where children are less likely to make it past age five, population growth rates tend to be the highest, and that's a little counterintuitive. Despite the deaths of children prior to reproductive age, these populations are growing quickly, in large part because the total fertility rate is larger than in other parts of the world. In these locations, poverty, health, access to family planning, and the overall role of women in society play a crucial role in the future of population growth. In the next video, we'll talk much more about how women fit into this picture, but what you should recognize here is that population growth is very much linked to a broader set of societal characteristics. There's one more statistic to be aware of, and this is called the age structure of population, and it varies a lot around the world. If you imagine a country where people have just one or two kids, live for a long time, then the age structure would look something like the pyramid on the left, which represents Western Europe. In this type of population, there are relatively few people in the working population, and proportionally more in the retired or older segments of society. The pyramid on the right is for Sub-Saharan Africa, and it looks very different. In general, the countries of Sub-Saharan Africa have very young populations, often heavily weighted toward children and teens. This type of structure poses the opposite challenge. In these settings, many young people have not yet entered the workforce, and economic growth then becomes a critical factor in creating opportunity for these young people as they grow older. It's also important to recognize that many young people in these types of countries have not yet had children. So the future of population growth depends a lot on the reproductive decisions and options these children have as they grow older. To summarize what we've talked about in this video, birth rates and immigration play key roles in projection of population growth rates. Death rates are important, but not as much as reproductive decisions, and mostly Deaths matter if they occur prior to or during the reproductive years. So if you remember one thing from this video, it should be this. Population growth, economics, and society, and environment are all interrelated. You cannot understand or project population growth without considering poverty, social structures, religion, and other factors. Lastly, there are big differences in the distribution of populations across ages. The highly developed economies of the world tend to be older and have low birth rates whereas the developing economies tend to be younger with higher birth rates. These age structures have big implications for economic development, and in a general sense, the world's wealthier countries will be dealing with aging populations in the coming decades, whereas the poorer countries will be dealing with large young populations in need of economic and educational opportunity.